since the very beginning of Fortnite, controller players have been feared. I'm feeling a little storm right now. I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little aim assist in my bones. Often, they have even been hated. Oh, what? Controller player! That is a controller player! Uh-oh. Gotta love the controller, dude. He just... Oh my god! He has aimbot! But who among them can be crowned the best controller player in Fortnite history? Was it Unknown Army? When we're talking about feared and hated controller players, he would 100% have to be on top of this list running through entire lobbies of pros like it was nothing. Okay, okay, at this point, it's just like, that's just unfair, bro. Bro, at this point, it's just like, this game is a joke right now. Sadly, Unknown Army could not keep up this same consistency from early chapter two. However, a new box diving controller demon wasn't far behind. Reed's explosion onto the scene was one of the craziest we have ever seen. What Unknown Army started, Reed most definitely finished. Two on in. Dad? Dude, these kids are horrible. What the East players? I got one called by the big the big shit. Seriously, I'm not. But we're talking about the best of all time, not just the best at one time. Wolfies, as one of only a handful of controller players to qualify for the World Cup, managed to come second. He would then go on to play second in squad FNCS and second in solo FNCS Invitationals, the highest placement of any controller player in EU history. Nah, 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 nah. 144? Oh my god, Quizzic, no. Oh, you've just been bullied. even more incredible controller players I have not mentioned. But to me, there can be only one answer to who is the best controller player of all time. Miro. And Miro might just be as quick as a flash here. He's gonna walk in through the side. He oh. finds two, that's one, oh. and that's the second. And all of a sudden, Miro is proving why he is this good. These are the actual best of the best going toe to toe right now. Day and Miro are truly terrifying players. Illustrio is still in this one, so we got some teams that are down there who need this big ball. Oh my god. There it is, Miro finds DJ. By far the most decorated controller player in Fortnite history, Miro has won more FNCSs on NA East than any other player, with five total crowns. Unlike many of the players previously mentioned, Miro's career started quite late. He wasn't even competing on PC until the start of Chapter 2, meaning he had a lot of catching up to do if he wanted to take home one FNCS, let alone five. He told me in an interview he was always good at Fortnite, even on console, playing in a number of pub kill race tournaments and minor third party events, but it was when he made $4,000 placing sixth in a qualifying week of solo FNCS that he realized he could be one of the best. However, despite solid solo placements, unfortunately, Mira would struggle to find teammates he believed matched his skill level. So with Trio FNCS being announced in Chapter 2 Season 4, many were shocked when Reverse 2K, a World Cup qualifier and one of the most notable players of Chapter 1, would decide to take on not one, but two unknown controller demons. Alongside Day, the trio would actually place in second in their first ever Cash Cup together. A good sign, but cash cups were far from FNCS Grand Finals. Many players in the community doubted the double controller trio could find the same success in more stacked lobbies. How wrong they were. The trio would go on to place 5th, 6th, 2nd and 4th in the qualifiers and heats. Yet people still questioned them. 
could this unknown controller demon show up on the biggest stage in grand finals? I'm the best! This FNCS win to me is still one of the most impressive in Fortnite history, and I'm not just talking NA East. While everyone was focused on teams like Booga, Jamper and Avery at Starks, or Zayt, Saf and Stretch at Doom's Domain, we had two previously unknown controller demons captained by Reverse 2K beat them all, and they did it on an edge map castle split even having to change their drop mid-tournament as teams started to contest what little loot they had. With Season 5 around the corner and another trio FNCS on the horizon, Miro had a new type of pressure. No longer an underdog trying to prove himself, but instead a target on his back as the current best trio in NA East. The trio would back it up with a very respectable fourth place, silencing a lot of the haters saying their win was luck. However, this trio wasn't done yet. They had now proven they were definitely one of the best teams in the region. It was time to prove they were the best team in the region. Reverse 2K was clearly very confident in their ability, making one of the most infamous videos in Fortnite history. I don't even know this quick, so I have no clue. I don't think they should be in grands. I don't think these guys should be in grands, but hey, the clutch. You know, I, I don't know who this team is. It's just a lot of teams I don't know. But yeah, those are the underdog teams. Other than that, I don't think any of the other teams would do well. I don't know who the, these teams are con. This is Lucky Nim. I don't think they're going to do too hot. Like, I really don't think Sparebo, Helix, and Pose are really good. They would run it back and do it all again, picking up another first place and $50,000 each, proving that they were undoubtedly the best trio in NA East. With some of the most insane clutches we've ever seen, Mira was able to prove to everyone it was not luck. Nice. Nice. Nice, Meryl. Oh, nice try, nice try, bro. That was a really good game. Sadly though, in chapter two, season seven, after splitting up and reforming, the trio was unable to find the same success, coming in 15th place in the grand finals. While not a terrible performance, after a back-to-back -back first place, people began to again doubt Miro. However, Booga also coming off a disappointing 8th place finish alongside Avery and Nosh, tired of not having an FNCS title to his name, decided to partner up with a controller player for the first time in his career. With the last trio season halfway through, an FNCS and the Grand Royale around the corner, the duo would do something that shocked many, picking up the young OCE export Muzz to round out their trio. We now had an incredibly notable trio, but one that many people doubted. The trio came out swinging, placing fifth in the first FNCS qualifier, automatically booking their ticket to grand finals. Yet they had only played a handful of tournaments together, forming incredibly late into the season, and none of them ever having played together before this season. Would it be enough? Paddle me, paddle me. Dead, dead, dead. dead. He's, he's going back for you, you got my finish. He's under your stair. Nice, Get angled. Dead, dead, dead. One HP, one HP, dead. Take our back, watch your back, watch your back. Holding, dead, all dead, all dead. Nice, nice. Oh, in my box, in my box. Hundred. Dead, 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 dead. Oh. Yeah, full piece. Hundred, dead, 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 dead. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, come here, come here, come here. You gotta come up, guys. You gotta come up, guys. This was a monumental victory for the trio. Mira becoming the first player in NA East to pick up three FNCS victories. Muzz becoming the first player in the world to win an FNCS on multiple regions. And Booga, the World Cup champion, finally picking up his first FNCS title. Chapter 2 Season 8 was special though. For the first time, we would have the Grand Royale, essentially another FNCS, but with the biggest prize pool since World Cup. And it was starting in less than two weeks. As the best team in the region, Booga, Miro, and Muzz were favorites to go back to back. However, in a decision that confused and upset many, Booga and Mira decided to drop Muzz, replacing him with Dukes. 
While I often question the decisions pros make in regards to their teammates, if you can back it up with placements, then so be it. Drop in, drop in, drop in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Punch that, 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 that. I'll get the mats, I'll get the mats. Uh, no, no, no. Wait, I'm over, I'm over. Get the body, throw the body. I'm gonna get it soon. Dead? No, I got one, I got one. back home, dead? Solo. One One dead, 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 get my mats. Get the mats. It's a solo on height. Yeah, chop him, chop him. Height's out. 130! No, get, up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. I don't have mats, I don't have mats. Me? Just wait. Nice. nice, you guys are- No, no I'm crazy! You're crazy. Oh, baby. baby! Miro now the four times FNCS champ and Booga the two time. They were looking unstoppable and with the introduction of chapter three, it was time to go back to duos. On a hot streak as the most decorated duo in NA East, surely they couldn't go back to back to back, right? The duo, the ultimate duo, the winners of FNCS NA East, Booga and Miro, they've done it again. 100, 120, 100 in the back, or maybe in the body, 100, dead, 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 Sadly, the winning streak had to eventually come to an end. And in Chapter 3, Season 2, Miro and Booga would place third overall, missing out on second by a singular point. Still an incredible finish, but after winning five of the last six FNCSs, it felt like anything but a win was a disappointment for Miro. With their eyes on first place, Chapter 3, Season 3 would be one of the most insane finishes to a Fortnite tournament we've ever seen. Going into the last game, Miro and Booga were in first place by 20 points. They went down early in rotating zones, but with Commandment as a solo, surely it would be enough. He needs something, anything, a miracle, a chance of desperation. It's all the way over to the right side. Moving to the zone. Right there. One player to one ten. Huge taken out, but he's out to the no. body. Two from Commandment, three to him, and he's grabbed a few mats. Of the walkers and shadows up on top of his build, of the 305 points, he's six away. Literally several and he has broken away from Fathom and Company. Fathom has to have to win the game. There is only an opportunity in now for Commandment. No match. This is it. No match. The end comes in. He hits the I cannot believe he survived. But will there be enough placement points there? On the back of a ridiculous solo clutch from Commandment, Miro and Booga would miss out on the championship by one single point. That is a quarter of an elimination. Well, I am sure they were disappointed, this means Miro's FNCS resume since Chapter 2, Season 4 includes first, 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 third, and now second. Absolutely ridiculous levels of consistency, undoubtedly earning himself the crown as the best controller player of all time. But where does that leave us now? After a disappointing finish to Chapter 3 and a rough start to Chapter 4, the now Dignitas duo have reformed, looking to take another crown and qualify themselves to the FNCS Global Championship. There are few titles you can say players in Fortnite unarguably hold, but I would have to say, without a doubt, Miro is the best controller player of all time.